live in a cosmic shooting gallery. Okay, not really. The universe actually is not out to get us. But if you lived in Chelyabinsk, Russia last February, when an asteroid the size of the stage exploded over your city, you might have felt that way. The astero asteroids aren't just the stuff of science fiction. We know that they're, they're potentially hazardous. They might hit Earth. And so what do you do to find these asteroids before they find us? Most asteroids are found by robotic telescopes. They open up every night and they look for moving objects in the sky. They categorize new objects that we might not have seen before and they find their orbits. But there's some uncertainty in their orbits because most telescopes can only see asteroids moving across the sky. They can't see if they're coming closer to us or further away. So this is where radar comes in. I work at Arecibo Observatory. It's the world's largest radio telescope and it also has the world's most powerful planetary radar system, which is kind of cool. We give speeding tickets to asteroids with our giant radar gun. <laughs> and measuring asteroid speeds with radar lets us see if they're coming towards us or away from us. And it helps us refine their orbits to see where they're gonna be in a year, decades, hundreds of years, millennia out. And once we know their orbits, then we can start saying, is this asteroid a threat to Earth? So before you can send Bruce Willis up into space and tell him what size drill bit to bring, you actually have to know what an asteroid is made out of. And this is where telescopes come in again. So most of the time when people think about asteroids, they think of space potatoes. They're lumpy, they're bumpy, they might have some craters and some pits, um, and you know, they're, they're kind of bright, this reflects a lot of light. But most space potatoes, most asteroids don't have barcodes on them from Whole Foods saying, oh, this is a locally sourced potato from Virginia. <laughs> but really, we're not gonna talk about space buds for the rest of the night. We're going to support diversity in the asteroid population out there. We're also gonna talk about space avocados. I like avocados because they're much more like asteroids. They're dark. They don't reflect a lot of light. And their interior is much more representative of what an asteroid actually is like. Maybe dark on the outside, it has a green center that happens to be tasty for this. On an asteroid, it's made out of a nice mineral. And then it has a dense core. So if it came time to send Bruce Willis and his oil drilling roughnecks up into space to move asteroids away, you're going to have a different approach for your uh, avocado and for your potato. But it's the 21st century. We can be a little more subtle than sending some guys to drill into an asteroid. We can do something like send a spacecraft to nudge an asteroid out of a way, or maybe paint half of it white and let sunlight do the rest. This is because Earth is a planet worth defending. We're the only planet that has sweet potato fries and avocados. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, you had a little throwaway comment I wanted you to explain more. How would painting an asteroid white help? Have you ever been to the beach on a hot day? Yes. And have you been to a parking lot where there's a white line and there's a, the black pavement? What are you going to walk on? The white line. You're going to walk on the white line because it reflects sunlight differently than the dark part of the asteroid. And the cool thing about asteroids is if uh, part of it, they're asymmetrical. So if you look at this potato, it's going to heat up and cool down differently on different sides. And so if you paint half of it white, that side's going to heat up differently than the dark side. And it'll actually cause the asteroid to change how it spins. And this project process doesn't happen overnight. It's a very slow process. But if you know that this asteroid is going to hit the Earth pretty far out, you can paint half of it white and wait for it to change in its spin. And that actually will change the asteroid's orbit either moving it further out in its orbit or closer in so that you can get it away from potentially hitting Earth. Cool. It's called the Yarkovsky effect. <laughs> of course. Uh, what else would you call it? The, uh, we're, we're on a Russian theme tonight. <laughs> the, uh, again, mental image that I'm getting here um, from your description there, and I'm wondering how you would go about painting an asteroid in space while it's hurtling towards Earth. Spray painting it? What? Yeah. what Who's what, seen what uh, you recommend? space balls? What would I recommend? Who's seen space balls? There's that scene where they got the big can of jam. They jammed the radar. 
Maybe, maybe you could do something like that. There might be an idea of maybe you take mylar fabric, you coat half the asteroid in mylar fabric. There might be, you can just put cover it in dust. There's a lot of options out there. These are, of course, much more science fiction than science reality at this moment. But there are a lot of investigations at the moment on how do you divert an asteroid that could potentially impact our planet. So um, is this something th that you worry about, that our civilization might be destroyed by an asteroid? Or do you think that uh, we have the ability to construct whatever it is we need to construct to forestall um, this from happening if we saw one coming, say, next week? Does this worry me? Um, I think there are, are slightly more immediate worries in my future. Um, on the other hand, I think there is, there is existing technology right now. Up the road at Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab, they're working on a mission to an asteroid. It's actually a binary asteroid. This asteroid has a moon. And they're looking into how could you change this asteroid's orbit as a test to see whether or not the current technology could be used in the future to divert potentially hazardous asteroids. So people are working on tests right now. And if you only need to move the asteroid's orbit by just a little bit, I think that's possible. But further down the road, larger deviations it may, might be a little more difficult. <laughs>